The views and opinions of this broadcast do not reflect the views and opinions of Armed Media, Unu Productions and its affiliates. Enjoy the show. Hi, everybody. Hey, everybody. It's Maria from What's the Story with Maria. How's it going? Maria, we can't hear you. Okay, hold on. I'm fixing the microphone. Can you hear it now, Jimmy? That's it. Okay, that's it. Just adjusted the mic. Hi, everybody. This is live radio, so anything can happen. This is Maria from What's the Story with Maria. How's everybody doing? Okay, so tonight is March 12th, and uh, uh, let me see. We have Chris Piero has come in. Rena Cugnelli Berge has come in, my cousin from Massachusetts. Rena, you're going to like the show. It's, uh, it's a Boston focused show. Michael Bowe has called in, Leslie Orfino. Uh, Marie Sullivan Baca has joined us. Patricia Kilty has joined us, and I'm so glad because she's going to be calling in at 9 15. Mike Callahan has joined. John Pandish has joined us. Uh, a bunch of people. And um, my. Uh, Two dogs are in the studio audience tonight, as well as my best friend, Susan Campanero. So, um, Jeannie Craig. Hi, Jeannie Craigie. You, uh, she, we were um, Facebooking today. Jeannie, there's a lot happening. I'm So, what? why am I doing this show? So, there's always a method to my madness, and let me just explain it to you. So, I like to look at the calendar, and sometimes I look at what my friends are doing, uh, and I want to promote their shows. And this particular week, there was nothing coming up on the horizon, so sometimes I book people well in advance, and sometimes something tells me to just let it be, and, I, and I'll get my idea as the week goes on. And so um, what I did was I let it just be what it was, and I realized that St. Patty's Day is coming up. Now, uh, hi, Julie Cesari has joined us. My, um, uh, Myron Lockett, I saw Myron last night at... Um, Trent Armand Kendall's uh, beautiful tribute, and we're going to try to talk about that at the end of the show as well. There's so much going on, and there's so much that I want to say. Meg uh, Dicey has joined us, and uh, just talk about, and just bring it full circle. So, it's St. Patty's Day is coming up uh, this Saturday, I believe, is the 17th. Oh, no, it's this Sunday. Now, it's funny because in New York, it's so diverse here that uh, there's so many people. Brian Johnson has joined us from Massachusetts. Um, and so, you know, we have a lot of different parades that happen all the time, and there's a lot of different things that we celebrate. In Boston, where I grew up, it's funny because we joke and we say, if you weren't Italian, then you must be Irish. And if you weren't Irish, then you must be Italian. Like, all our friends were either Italian or Irish. So those of us that were Italian got just as involved in the Irish uh, St. Patty's Day parades as the... Irish kids did because we hung out with them and we partied, we went to the parades, we all that stuff. We did all that crazy stuff. And when we would have big holidays, like at the feasts in the North End, all our Irish friends would come to those Italian feasts. So we really like intermingled uh, a lot. And so it's funny because when the holiday comes up, I have two thoughts. Uh, one is I really miss my Boston people. Um, during St. Patty's week. It's crazy, but I do because I don't know. We used to like it. I went to Catholic school, so we used to celebrate it and all those saints days and all that stuff. But um, when I was partying back in the day, it was my mother's least favorite holiday because I was always in trouble on that day. So I'm just going to throw that out to my mother in heaven. Ma, don't worry. None of that is going on. Um, and anybody that knows me knows that I don't drink at all anymore for many, many years, almost 30 years. But when it happens, it's funny, when this holiday comes up, I always get really excited for some reason. Now, everybody that knows me knows I love food, and uh, the Irish are not known for their cuisine. I will say that. However, I did, and I'll tell you, show you at the end of the show, I did make a traditional Irish meal for us tonight. 
So, okay, thinking about Boston and all this stuff that, uh, all this nostalgic stuff came up, right? And how much fun my friends and I used to have and at the parades and all the, all the different kinds of things. I started thinking about um, where I grew up. And then one of my high school friends out of the blue uh, Facebooked me and said, hey, my husband's band is playing on the 22nd. Are you going to be back in Massachusetts by any chance? And, you know, you could come see him. And I said, oh, no, I'm not. I'm not going to be there. Uh, however, I'll, you know, I'll plug it. I'll promote it. And she said, I said, why don't you call in and talk about your husband's band? She's like, no, nah, we're kind of shy. But uh, my son is a rapper. I was like, your son's a rapper. I mean, they're Irish. So I didn't put the two and two together. I mean, there's Eminem. But for the most part, the rappers I know are uh, of color, you know, Hispanic, African-American, Caribbean I didn't, I was like, wow, that's really cool. So, uh, as I said, the only one I know, uh, Irish, you know, traditional Irish rapper is like Eminem. So, anyway, I got in contact with her son, and he's really cool. He's this really, really cool guy. And we talked, and he sent me all this, um, these different um, links to his songs on Spotify, and I really like it. I really, really like this guy, and he's really, like, a great kid. But he's not a kid. I mean, he's an adult now, but... Because I went to school with his mother, it's like, to me, that everybody's a kid. So anyway, and the other cool part is that uh, my friend Patricia Kilty, who lives in Massachusetts and is a local in, in Stoneham, where, where, where you know, I went to high school, she's really big locally because she's very involved in the arts. And um, she's one of these people that just, hi, Tim Devlin. It's going to be a Boston show, so I think you'll be interested. Tim Devlin is one of our Boston buddies, too. He lives in New York, but we always talk about that. So anyway, Patricia Kilty, um, when I associate, you know, like someone that really pulls for the home team, it's her. And I, her daughter and I, actually, both her daughters and her son and I went to high school together. We were in different classes and different ages, but we were, you know, local kids. And we were, uh, I saw this week that Patricia posted about our football team. And they won the Super Bowl, or Stoneham Spartans. I was so excited. So I thought, wait a minute. I know what I'm going to do this week. I am going to do a Boston local um, show about local, and that's why I'm calling this show uh, Local Artists and Angels, because there are those of us that are artists that do what we do, and, you know, we're, we're in it every day and trying to create and make new things, and then hopefully people will enjoy and then there's people like Patricia that are those angels and winds in our sails that keep things going and make sure that the theaters are running. She's on the board at the Greater Boston Theater there, and I'll have her tell you all about it. But um, she's always keeping me updated on what's happening. Joseph Hunter has joined us. Hi, Joe Hunter. How are you? Um, so I just thought, you know, that's, I mean, I grew up in the North End, but then we moved out more towards the North Shore of Massachusetts. And uh, Jimmy, our producer and engineer, he's from Uber, and so we were like, we understand that local mm -hmm. talent. Johnny Tomorrow has joined us. Johnny Tomorrow is going to be on our show next week, by the way. So I'm very much looking forward to that, swinging the pendulum in the complete other direction of the Italians. So, But, you know, as we said in Massachusetts, you're either Italian or you're Irish. So those are the two pendulums. And... Um, Anyway, so I thought this is what I'm going to do for this week's show. I'm going to talk about um, what it was like growing up in that community where we had a tremendous amount of theater. Our parents were very, very, very um, supportive of what we did. Teresa uh, Pepe has joined us. Hi, Teresa. Uh, hamster for life. Who's who, uh, Jeannie Craig writes hamster for life. Right. It's like... You know, you're, you're always helping each other out. You're always pulling for your local uh, kids and your, your local teams. And, you know, I was fortunate enough to grow up in different communities. At first, I grew up in the North End, and that was like all Italians in an amazing community. And I'm still friends with all of those people. Then we moved to, like, Medford Somerville line, which was uh, right near Tufts College. And I, that's where I started doing children's theater at, a, at 10. And I uh, got a scholarship to, to the Tufts program there. And that's where I, my love of theater came from. Uh, for five seasons, Richard Koch has joined us. Hi, Richard. He's an incredible photographer. So for five seasons, I did theater there. And I met other local kids. 
from all walks of life, and my horizons broadened even more. And then we moved to Stoneham. You know, as, as your parents hopefully do better in life, they want you to have a better life, so they, they moved to different places. I, I mean, I went to Catholic school up until 10th grade. And then in 10th grade, we moved, because my parents bought a house in Stoneham, and uh, we moved there. And uh, that's where they had an amazing theater department. Amazing. So I was in the Spartan Corral, which is, we, you know, we uh, went to the White House the year of my graduation. It was like an incredible, we did plays, constantly doing plays and musicals. And I, I still am friends with all those people. And so much of what I learned was from the musical director there. Um, Frank Abrahams, who I had the good fortune to see again, we did a, a fundraiser for our high school after many, 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 many years. And so we all got together. And that's where I ran into a lot of my old buddies, you know, from these reunions. And I was just reminiscing about that a lot and how important that is on that level, you know, to, uh, to be involved in theater. And our parents were all involved in it, made costumes, uh, helped us sell tickets, made cookies for bake sales. I mean, that doesn't happen as much in New York because, like I said, it's like so many people here and it's so diverse and there's so many different schools. And, but in these small suburban communities, there's a lot of that. And I really feel that I, I took that with me. You know, I, I uh, still have all that hometown love uh, with me. And so now I teach in a beautiful community in Morristown, New Jersey, called the Male Performing Arts Center. And so much of what I learned, uh, you know, in my school days, I carry, you know. So, uh, yeah, Brian Johnson has uh, chimed in. He was He's a local guy, and he said Frank was awesome. He really really was awesome and he is awesome he's in california now and uh so much of what we did and then there was this company called stone and summer theater that we the local kids that graduated were like now what do we do we want to keep doing theater so we started stone and summer theater sst and we launched it from nothing and uh, did shows every summer and that was incredible and i was involved in that for a long long time hi michael vaccaro how are you so um, anyway, so that's what got me feeling very nostalgic about hometown artists and angels. That's why I call the show this. So, you know, I always have to go with my heart. Like, uh, it's hard for me to do what I don't, what I'm not feeling. I mean, I can, you know, pull things together. But this week I really was feeling that I wanted to give uh, props, shout outs, uh, love back to my hometown North End, Medford, Somerville line there, and Stoneham, where I grew up. Uh, hi, Mary. Mary's joined us. So uh, I'm so glad to see you. This all, A lot of this happened because you texted me about your husband's band, which, by the way, if you don't mind, Mary, um, I would love it if you typed in uh, after, after um, Trevi calls in. Maybe at the end you can type in uh, where your husband is playing and the date. I, I know it's March 22nd. This is all how this all started. Um, Mary uh, texted me and told me about the band playing, and I really wanted to go. So we'll we'll uh, let, let let us know about Kyle's band. Um, so now we got Virginia. I mean, sorry, Pat Kilty is going to be calling in any second. So maybe I'll call her and see. Make sure she has my number. She's going to be calling in, and we're going to talk about the Greater Stoneham. I mean, the Greater Boston. Theater. So let's see if we can get a hold of Pat. Okay, I'm going to call it right now. All right, so, um, and again, this is, we're talking about a local talent, local talent and um, where it starts, and then um, growing from there, you know, things like that. So I'm just going to, I'm hoping that she picks up the phone here, or maybe she's going to. Pat, all right, we will get her. So, Pat, listen, if you're listening, please call in. I don't know, maybe she fainted from the excitement because I know <laughs> that she was so excited that she kept, first she was nervous. She's like, what am I going to talk about? I said, there's a million things that you're going to talk about. Don't worry about it. And then um, she s started posting all these exciting, she was very excited about um, calling in. So I'm hoping, Jeannie, get a hold of Pat. Let's see if she can call in. All right. So anyway, um, also we have a parade in um, 
St. Patty's Day Parade is happening, I think, Saturday. Is it this Saturday in New York City as well? All right, she'll have to call back. So, okay, um, Jeannie, are you on it? Yes, funny, Jeannie's oh, our mutual friend. Yeah, Pat's supposed to call in at 9.15, so I don't know. Like I said, Jeannie, maybe she fainted from excitement. Anyway, uh, Mary, why don't you post um, your husband's... I know he's playing, his band is playing. I, I went home for a reunion over the summer, or maybe it was, yeah, it was the summer. And it was amazing. We had the most amazing time in the local bands there. And a lot of them are, are like guys that I went to high school with that are still playing. Uh, keep calling Ghost of Voicemail? All right, I'm going to call you, uh, Pat. I'm going to call you now and pick up the phone, okay? So, all right. We're, but see, you see this? We have all these different mediums. Oh, here she is. Here she is. Okay. Hi, sweetheart. Is that you, Pat? Are you there? Oh my God! Okay, we we have solved the mystery. Okay, this is Pat Kilty, everybody. She is my friend from Stoneham. Pat, say hi to your radio audience. <laughs> Hello, everybody out there in the, the big wide world, right? The big nice wide to see world. Nice to see you podcasting you all over the place. I'm I know. You, I'm great, sweetheart. You know, it's so funny. I was just, Jeannie Craig is watching, and I just said, uh, Jeannie, please call Pat and tell her to call in. <laughs> so I, she... I started at 9.50. kept going to voicemail. No big deal. Here oh, I am, and how are you? I'm Have fantastic, sweetheart. Day. I am fantastic. And um, so I want, you know, I want the reason that I wanted you to call in, many reasons. First of all, I always miss you, and I love hanging out with you. You were a lot of fun when I come home. I like that we go for lunch. What's that, your favorite place there, Pinoni's? We got a, we got a Dave Pignon place, right? Yeah, that is such a great yeah. little local place, and a yep, shout out is. to Dave Pignon's place on uh, Main Street in Stoneham. Right on Main Street, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So listen, I I noticed that you posted about the Stoneham Spartans. Oh Tell me what God. happened can, there. Can you imagine? We had uh, pretty much a perfect season until I, I, I almost shouldn't even tell you this. No, until, tell me. Uh, Thanksgiving Day, on Thanksgiving we played our traditional rival. Ready, meeting, yeah. And we got killed. We oh got my, killed. what? However, it, it was not a league game. We had already won that first level of championships. And so, in the middle six week, we went to Patriot Stadium to play with the Super Bowl. Right. And uh, I, I, I'd never been there before. Uh, PG Place or whatever the heck they call it. Wow. And it was very, it was absolutely overwhelming. Oh my God. I, I, just, to me, it was overwhelming. Yeah, well, me too. I, I always have to tell people that the um, naive person that I am, when I finally, we were going to our seats, and the stadium is massive. I mean, it's, it's tears high. But I looked up in the field and I said, oh, this is just a football field. <laughs> it's the same size oh, as the high school. Oh, okay. And it just, of course, I know a football field is 100 yards, right? But it was still, for some stupid reason, um, struck me as a surprise. Oh, the yeah. It was the same size. Pat, hold on for one second. Hold one second, because my cousin Marisa has just come on. Marisa, I got Pat Kilty on the phone from Stoneham. She was just telling me about the Stone Spartans, and uh, they won the football. <laughs> they won the Super Bowl of high school football this year, and that yeah. is very impressive. Now, Pat, I want you to, like, I, for me, you were just <clears throat> always this great mom. I went to high school with your kids. Uh, you were always involved in theater, and now you're really involved on a bigger level. So I want Hi. you to talk about that, the theater that you're involved in and how you're involved uh-huh. with it. Go ahead, sweetie. Well, you know, we used to call it Stoneham Theater, but we uh, have gone through a, a rebranding process, and it's now known as the Greater Boston Stage Company. And I have been actively involved since its inception, um, uh, very, very proudly, I must say. I know, and I love that about you. I'm on the board. 
I've served on several committees, um, overseeing a lot of fundraising. And uh, in fact, our next fundraising event will be on May 4th, which is uh, Kentucky Derby Day. Really? So, so obviously we did a Kentucky Derby theme. Oh, I love that. The theater, the theater is wonderful. It is a professional theater. Not everybody it's really an, understands. It's an equity that. theater, isn't it? It's an equity it's an theater. Equity theater. <laughs> yeah, but because it's small and it's in Stoneham, which is you know not the uh, much as we love Stoneham, it's not the the. Uh, What's well, not? The coolest. Well, it's yeah, it's not the center of of uh, Boston, you know. It's like it's on the outskirts. It's yeah. it's about ten miles north. Yeah. So you're you're right. But so people tend to think that it's just another little local theater, but it's not. I say to people, it's the same as going to New York City and Broadway. Absolutely. It's the same principle. Well, it's a professional equity theater. Now I will tell you something, Pat. You know, I worked with a gentleman uh, a few weeks ago. His name is James Scheider. And he is actually coming to the Stoneham, I mean, to the greater, it's called now called the Greater Boston greater, Theater. Greater Boston Stage Company. Yeah, the, Stage okay, Company. Greater Boston, yeah. Greater Boston. In, and what, in what production? He, in Million Dollar Quartet. Oh, my God. I know, and he was on Broadway, so he is a Broadway guy. I mean, he plays, um, I'm going to have him look for you. He plays um, Jerry Lee Lewis. I know, and I'm he's. Looking, I'm looking at the ad now, and, and the uh, the little uh, the caricature of Jerry Lee Lewis. I mean, it's like it's like yeah, he does. And I'm going to give What's the his dates. Name again? His How name is again? James J A M E S Scheider, S C H E I D E R. Okay, I will make it my business to. Um, find him to meet him and say hello. He's a sweetheart, and he. Um, they're going to be there from. April 25th through May 19th. Yeah, a good, a good solid three weeks. Yeah. yeah. It's probably already close. Not sold out, but damn close. Yeah, I'm sure. So uh, if you yeah, Boston... People, that's what the people like. I mean, this is the people. And I'm going to tell you, Maria, that um, we were talking about Spot and Corral and the arts program at the high school, which kind of... Foot in more recent years, yeah, and and the Spot and Corral reunion really, um, the new superintendent really impressed, and and I think that they have uh, reinstituted or have added to the elementary level uh, art program. Wow, I, that makes I me so happy, Pat. It, but hopefully, it'll move forward. But in the meantime, one of the things that um, is so wonderful at Great Boston Stage, our education program, which we developed maybe a year or two into the theater's uh, existence, and it is absolutely knock your socks off. I know, honey. I know it, you guys are doing amazing work, and yeah. it's really, well, really... It's great right through high school, so it's just, it's just grand. Uh, and and I, I never realized the importance of theater. Like it's like playing football. I mean, it's, it's a team effort. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Than to memorize your lines. Absolutely, I yeah. couldn't agree with you more, Pat. Yeah, I couldn't right. agree with you more. Well, listen, honey, I love you so much. I can't. Oh. I can't even tell you. I really do. I love you. You're my friend for life. And I thank you so much for everything you're doing over there um, on a local level. But, you know, what, I'm, I'm, what I want to tell people is that yeah, these it local... It all begins at home. It, it all begins at home. Right? Absolutely. Th you know, as my cousin Marisa and I always talk about, it's like act l locally, think globally. I think we say that's the, the, the saying. And you're a perfect example of that. And I well, really appreciate you. your effort. Yeah, we, we just all do the best we can. That's all. I know, honey. Do it the best you can. I know. Thank you for letting me. Uh, Anytime, Pat. Show. I'm so excited. Oh my so God! Excited. And I'll, I'm going to tell my friend James to look for you. Okay? He's yeah, the I, sweet I, guy. I've been there two or three times. I'm sure working with the uh, with the volunteer group. And then I'll be there as a patron. But I will make it my business to meet him. Trust me. Okay, honey. I know. I do trust you. And when, and when I see you, listen, this time lunch is on me. We're going to Pignoni's, okay? Okay. Thank 
Okay, you got it. All right, love you, honey. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, that was the absolutely wonderful Pat Kilty. So, as I said, Pat Kilty's kids and I went to high school together. Um, I wanted to shout out people who are joining us. Wonderly White, Anthony Fett, uh, Elaine Aponte Feliciano has joined us. Darius Frana, hi Darius. We did something great last night, we're, and uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna try to talk about that at the end of the show. Susie's in the studio audience. She's gonna help me. Hi Richard Skipper, how are you, honey? And um, okay, uh, Mary, thank you. So Mary Rarden is telling me that. The Kramers, her husband's band, are playing at the Lord Wakefield in the Lounge, Lakeside Tavern, March 22nd, 8 p.m. So if you are in that area, in the North Shore of Boston, it, they are a great band. They're called the Kramers, playing at the Lord Wakefield in the Lounge, Lakeside Tavern, March 22nd, 8 p.m. That is a local band playing great music. Please go and see them. And if you do, and you found out about it here, please tell them. Maria sent us. Okay, Maria Gentili, because we went to, Mary and I went to high school together, and uh, she was just a sweetheart, and we just had such a great, um, great, hi, uh, Leah Malloy, how are you? Uh, we had a great high school class, and we worked together, you know, like, what Pat Kilty was talking about is that, uh, exactly that, we worked together, and when you, when you do theater, or you're in sports, um, hi, Cheryl, uh, Juliano, how are you, sweetie, she just checked in from L.A., when you work in theater or you're in a, a sports team or a dance company, when you're working in groups, I can't stress this enough to people that have kids. Or if you're an adult and you're looking for something to do, you want to reconnect with other human beings. There's, uh, I can't say enough about that. Like in Morristown, tomorrow, where I teach at the Mayo Performing Arts Center, tomorrow Darius Frowner and I, because we teach together as well as uh, performing uh, downtown, we have our adult show tomorrow night, and these amazing people that are, you know, day, uh, by day or moms or paralegals or real estate agents, whatever they're doing, they get to sh really shine, you know. And but so that's one part of it that you get to shine when you're in sports or when you're in theater. The long term, that's the short term. The long term is that you build a community of friends where you've had similar experiences. Um, okay, so people are checking in. Um, Hector Garcia, hi, hola Maria. Hugs to you, hi Hector Garcia, how are you my love? I think you guys are back in Miami, right? Um, Hector and George are married, I was at their wedding, it was wonderful. And uh, now George, I think, not I think, I know, is doing amazing art, he's a visual artist now. And so if you guys are ever gonna be back in New York, please Hector, tell me. Oh, you know who's calling in now? Hi, Gene Simpson Dunn has called. I checked in. This is a local artist named Trevi. Hold on a second. Trev, hold on, buddy. Can you hear me, honey? Yes, I can. How are you doing, Maria? I'm doing great, sweetheart. I'm going to ask you to just bring up your voice a tiny bit. And, okay. Okay, so everybody, I just want to let you know, this is uh, Trevi. Am I saying it right? Well, okay. Like just like the fountain. All right, that's what I was going to ask you. Oh, so I want to let me just introduce everybody to you, and then I, that was one of my questions. So this is Trevi, and what he is is a rapper. Now, anybody that knows me knows that that's not usually <clears throat> something like I listen to on long term. Like I like certain artists. Like I was telling, we were talking today. I love um, Biggie is my favorite. I like Tupac. You know, I kind of like the old school rappers. I'm not. I, I love Drake. You know, those are my guys, and. Um, so I, I got connected with Trevi through his mom, believe it or not, who's a friend of mine. And she said, you know, my son's a rapper. I was like, he is. So, and then he said, he and I got connected and he sent me, hi, Gina Savino. Gina Savino is my cousin from, uh, she's a, a local girl. She's from Revere and she has a salon, 132 Ferry Street in Everett. It's called, um, Joyce's Unisex Salon. Susie, will you clap please? Cause when Gina comes on, we clap. Yay! Yay! Gina Savino. <clears throat> okay. So that done. Sorry, Trevi. I had to uh, interrupt. So Trevi is this um, rapper that I, I sent me his music, and I, I was really, really, really blown away. And I'm not just saying that. So um, we'll talk about your music in a, in a minute. But Trevi, first of all, tell me why you chose the name Trevi. Uh, so it originally originated from uh, a two personal 
know, spring breaks, uh, Italy to visit one of my best friends. And it was about the time I was making music. Um, I, I decided to skip a week of school and head over there. And uh, we needed to come up with a, a new stage name, so that, uh, that ended up sticking. And now the the Trevi Fountain, I'm I'm assuming that's what you're talking about, right? Yeah. 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 Now you know I I was in Rome last summer. Did you know? I don't I didn't tell you that, but uh, when we were talking, and I have a picture in front of the Trevi Fountain with my Patriot shirt on. So oh, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to send that my way. I'm gonna have to send it your way. Now I gotta tell you, honey bunny, and we've never met, and like I said, I know your mom, and I love your mom, but we. I know that, I, I mean, another reason why I love what you're doing is because you and I think alike in that sports-minded Boston way. I'm a huge, even though I've lived in New York almost 30 years, I'm a huge um, fan of the Celtics, the Red Sox, the Patriots, the Bruins, and those are my teams. And I, in your music, uh, which we're going to talk about how people can find it in a minute, uh, Trevi references... His, you know, he talks about teams and he talks about sports and, you know, the, one of your, the lines in one of your songs is bleeding green, you know, in reference to the Celtics, right? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I look at music the way I looked at sports my entire life. I think that Boston in general is sports sports. Everything is a competition. And, uh, yeah, I definitely enjoy uh, their trumpets. Uh, across all, all four sports, um, specifically the Boston one, definitely. Absolutely. Uh, called Marcus Smart. Uh, he's never, and uh, the, I want to talk about this right now. Just bring your voice up a tiny bit, honey. For some reason, it's just not coming through as loud as I, I would like it to, and I want to make sure okay. you're picked up. So now the Marcus Smart, okay, so uh, the, I wrote down the song. I mean, I love all the songs you sent me, but I got to tell you, like, that the my favorite one is... um. I wrote it down. Is there for me? I love that song. Um, so I, I, we definitely have to tell people how to get a hold of this. But this Marcus Smart song, I want you to now, Marcus Smart. Tell everybody what you meant by. It's called Marcus Smart, right? Yeah, it's called Marcus Smart. Um, the idea of the song originated when went down to visit uh, some friends in Dallas, and I, I met another rapper down there who actually went to high school with Marcus Smart and played basketball with him. I was in Slideway D-Bone. And I wanted to make a song uh, together, and that seemed like a really great scene. And, and Marcus Smart was a basketball player. If anyone knows how he plays the game, he's just the ultimate grinder. He bags on every ball on the floor, he takes the charges, he does all the, the little things. I got heart like Marcus Smart. I love that. I was listening. I listened to it like four times in a row. I loved it. It just stuck in my head, and I'm like, that is so great. And, and you know, the thing is, I don't know if it's just a Boston thing, but we are really scrappy. Like Boston people are really scrappy, and uh, are, and we love like uh, we love our teams because they're scrappy too. You know? Exactly, exactly. And that, and that comes through in your music. It really does. And I want you to know that I have my Celtic shirt on tonight because of you. I got my Celtic shirt on. Now, it, I will say, though, it's an old shirt, so it's a Rondo shirt because he was my favorite player back in the day. Um, so I got... Yeah, that's why I loved him. He was totally scrappy. And my dog Rizzo has her Celtic shirt on tonight, and I can't grab her now because I need my hand to hold the phone, but I'll grab her later. She is wearing her Kevin Garnett shirt, which I bought her that same season. So, um, yeah, I love the Celtics, too. And I always uh, look on your Facebook page, and you guys have been to a lot of games. Now, you said that you met Marcus Smart? Did you get... Uh, no, I, I, I haven't heard from that him. Um, but he heard your music, right? Yeah, so he... Uh... Wow. Now, okay, tell everybody how they can find you. Uh, so you can find me uh, on Spotify, uh, 
Spotify or Apple Music. Um, if you search Trevi and... Spell that. Uh, spell that, Trev. Spell it. T-R-E-V-I. T-R-E-V-I. Yep. And then if you also search uh, like one of the songs along with it, like you can search Market Smart or... Or uh, the, the first mixtape I did, which was uh, called Library Line. Yeah, I'm gonna let me just tell people. Okay, I'm gonna. I want to piggyback on what you're saying. I've written everything down because this is. It's important that you have everything written because sometimes there's so much music out there and similar. There's similar names and stuff that it's sometimes hard to find people. But I want you to find Trev. So, one of his songs is called There for Me. The uh, then you look look up Library Lines. Just like uh, like it sounds, uh, 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 and then uh, another song is "I Got Us." I love that song, by the way, and that also I love that song, and that also references uh, sports again. Yeah, yeah, I, it's so yeah. cool. What's the line you say? "I got us," like, and it's it's a reference to basketball. I can't. I, I got us. I got us. If I'm being honest, girl is a goddess. I love it. I love it. I love all the sports references. It's so cool. Um, and then there's Marcus, the Marcus Smart song. So um, I, he, Trev told me earlier that if you just uh, go to Spotify and type in library lines, and then once you find one of his songs, they're all kind of connected, like they come in a row. That's how... I, I, I noticed that they're all like in a row and then you can listen to them. So, um, and another thing I wanted to tell you that I really love about your music is that, um, especially the first one there for me, is that what you talk about, and I don't want to give too much of it away because I want you folks to go and listen to his music. What I love in there for me is that you reference, because you, you're also, um, is it okay if I say what you do for a living? Okay, so he is also an engineer, and uh, uh, your mom said that on your bio it says the only rapper that has an engineering degree. Yep, that's, that's correct. I mean, that's so cool, you know, so that's like that puts you in a, you know, a different category. Everybody's got their backgrounds, and that's your background. So what I really liked about There For Me is that you talked about, like, like that real, uh, that angst and that, like, fear of, like, having to achieve, having to stay where, where you were, and studying for finals and all that went goes with that and the, like the real high stress that comes with that and I thought that was amazing yeah absolutely I, a, a lot of times in my songs uh, especially, especially that one that you referenced there, there for me um, I really just like to talk about my life and how uh, real situations are right um, a, lot, a lot of times uh Rappers uh, uh, portray themselves in a different way than they actually are when on their, their Monday through Friday is just like everybody else where they actually have to have a job and can make real money to pay their bills. And so uh, every day I, I wake up in the morning and I, I got to put my heart hat on and head to the job site as an engineer. Right. And uh, after a 12 hour day, I I love it. Absolutely. And you know what? What you're talking about is exact. I've been talking about this on my show a lot. Like the show is about creative people, and the and I always say the reality of what that means. It doesn't mean that every night we're on stage and people are throwing money at us. It means that you, like, we have our art and we have our day jobs and we have our real lives and we have families and, you know, we got to pay our car insurance and, like, real things are happening. And I love that, that about, you know, your music. It comes through in your music. And I, I really, you know, when you were talking about in that one song, um, uh, in uh, in there for me when you re reference the Adderall like I thought that that was really powerful stuff because a lot of kids that are and not just kids you know adults go back to school I have friends that are in their 40s and 50s that have gone back to school and are getting their masters and are freaking out you know and it's just that that grind that we're like that high pressure of all of that 
and you really talked about that, and I just wanted to say that I really appreciated that. It really is, and I, I love that you brought that to light. So, uh, okay, so we want everybody, please do me a favor. You have to look up Trevi. And the best way to do it that I've found, for me, like uh, if you go to Spotify, that's the best way to do it. Go to Spotify and type in Library Lines or type in There For Me, I Got Us, Marcus Smart. They're all going to come up, and then his songs will be together. Um so anyway, Trev, I can't think. Oh, and also, Trev likes music, right? The hashtag Trev likes music, <laughs> right? Trev yeah, likes yeah. pictures. Yeah. So uh, on Instagram, and I say Instagram is probably my biggest platform where I post uh, all my music. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I like okay. Okay, so that's tomorrow night, and that people can still come. And where is that again? Um, that would be at the Middle East uh, at the end of the month. Uh, the, the competition runs through until tomorrow night. Okay, so everybody go to Trev Likes Picture on Instagram, at Trev, T-R-E-V, Likes, L-I-K-E, Pictures, P-I-C-T-U-R-E-S. Go there, and you will find Trev. Thank you, Honey Bunny, so much. I look forward to meeting you, and God bless you because you are on the right track. Thank you very much. Okay. I just want to give a, uh, I just want to give a quick shout-out uh, to my producer and uh, one of my best friends. Go ahead, honey. So he, he, uh, he's been starting with me this whole journey, and, uh, and, and he did pretty much all my beats along the entire way. Wow, so, and they're so great. If you like my music, you got to check out his, his stuff, too. Okay, fantastic. And uh, thank you so much, and, well, and I look forward to meeting you someday, okay? I do as well. Thank you, Maria. Oh, you're so welcome. Give your mother a hug for me. I will. Thank you. Okay, bye, sweetheart. Okay. What a nice, nice, nice boy. Well, he's a man. But to me, as I said, everybody's like a kid. Now, because, uh, of course, when you get older, Janine Molinari has joined us. Well, Chef Pamplin, Leah Sutton has joined us, John Bell. Now, i got to show you, because I was telling Trev, you know, he's a big Celtics fan, Boston fan. My little Rizzo is behind me because that's where she likes to sit. And she is wearing her Celtic shirt tonight. Riz, show everybody your Celtic shirt. I have mine on, too. She's a little shy tonight. She's just, like, sleepy. So... Uh, we have our Celtic shirts on tonight. Uh, London is also here. She's a dog, and she is not wearing her Celtic shirt. She is wearing pink, though, and she looks beautiful. I feel like London, maybe at the end of the show, we'll put you on camera, too. What do you think? Um, anyway, so it's ju- I, let's go to the section of our show. Of course, everybody, go ahead. Keep eating. All right. Now, of course, as I was talking about, I have my Celtic shirt. Rizzo has her Celtic shirt on it, I am. I have my green cup. Why? Because it is St. Patty's Day 
on, I think it's Saturday or Sunday. I can't remember the exact day. I think it's Sunday. Yes. Now, yes, I'm Italian, but I have so many Irish friends. I grew up in Boston, so St. Patty's Day was a big deal. Um, what, you know, I like to say with the food themes, the Irish, as I've said, are not always, thank you, Mar- Marisa, for jumping in there. They're not always known for their um, cuisine. They're known for many other things, writing poetry, um, opening great pubs, um, art, all kinds of things, writers, they're amazing writers. But I went with a traditional, of course I put my own twist on it, because like, there's no way I can just make it the way that it's supposed to be made. All right, so this, what did I make? Because I actually love it. Corn, beef, and cabbage. So I got a nice corned beef, and I put it in the slow cooker uh, because that is what Martha Stewart suggests, and I trust Martha Stewart. I don't usually follow recipes, but this time I I was like, I don't want to do it wrong, and I'd never made it. So corned beef hash. Now, instead of just regular cabbage, because that sounded boring to me, I got red cabbage, which I love. So there's corned beef, uh, corned beef and uh, cabbage, green, red cabbage, and I put carrots, celery. Instead of regular potatoes, I had to do my own twist. I put sweet potatoes so that this would be more interesting to me. They give you a little packet of stuff to rub on the the, uh, corned beef, and I did that, but I had to step it up a little bit. So I put some thyme. I had to put garlic as an Italian. There's no way I can't do it. So I put some garlic in there too, and I hope it's delicious. There's mustard here because usually that's how it's served with mustard. And it's going to be really good. And I have invited my friend Susan Campanero over to join me for dinner now. Also, uh, this is Irish. This is Dubliner cheese. So it's vintage Irish cheddar. It is delicious. And it's a little bit sweet, too, which I like. So I'm going to have this with some nice oat bran, oat nut bread. That's what I'm going with. Not Italian bread. I'm, I'm staying as Irish as I can. Okay, in my Italian way. So that's that. And then I have made a salad of, oh, I forgot the blue cheese, but, okay, so a salad of just um, a lot of the Irish pubs in Boston, they always have like um, uh, iceberg lettuce, and then they put a big blob of blue cheese on there. So I had to step it up a little bit. And so iceberg lettuce, of course, the little cucumbers, um, I mean the cucumbers, green, I mean the orange Peppers. Now, you see, I have done the Irish flag here. Is any of my Irish friends noticing that? I went for the Irish flag. And I put chives in here. Okay? Chives are really big with my Irish friends. So, that's that. It's going to be so good. I'm putting blue cheese on that. It's in the fridge, though. I forgot to take it up. I didn't want it to go bad. Now, Rena, my cousin Rena, who always notices everything. She is Miss Detail. Yes, you're right. You are looking at delicious Cupcakes, vanilla and chocolate with green frosting, of course, for St. Patty's Day. So that is what we are eating tonight. Now, there's 10 minutes left of the show. I am going to invite my best friend, Susan Campanero, to join, because she's joining me for dinner. Yes. Hi. Hi, everybody. It's It's Susan. Hi. Now, Susan, why This is such a cool show. I know, and then I'm going to grab London in a minute. Oh, here she comes. Blendy, Hold on. come on. So, you know Blendy. what? Here, you grab the Rizzo, and Blendy. I'm going to... Now, I want Blendy. you to talk about what we did last night, because it was so amazing. Well, last night, we honored our dear friend, Chen, Trent Armand Kendall. Uh, we went to the cutting room, and uh, Trent's longtime companion, Michael Polisi, uh, put together a beautiful gram to honor his love. And uh, I and Maria are fortunate enough that we worked at the duplex on Singer Spotlight Night. That's a Monday night. Um, and back in the day, it was um, most of our friends were on Broadway or they, they were coming up. Um, and everyone came to the duplex on Monday night to see Darius, myself, and Maria and sing and hoo-ha, as we call right. it. And so Darius Frowner put together a duplex spotlight moment, which Michael Polisi wanted. And so we all were on stage just singing, as we do. It was amazing. And you know what? When I looked at that picture, Darius Frowner, who's the musical director there, runs this uh, singer spotlight night, which we all started, you know, we've been doing it so long. Susie, when did you start working there with Darius Uh, the 90, early 90s? It would be 93. 93. And then I yeah. jumped on in 98. 
But you and Darius started that, and then I jumped on it. And the people that um, that were par- just part of the community of singers, like I was talking about, being a community of singers, uh, and how it starts, like Pat was talking about on a local level, and then how it just so and, and and how we always talk about Marisa and I talk about act globally, act locally, think globally. So we started out just as singers together there, and the singers that came out of there were Norm Lewis used to come in. Oh yeah, Norm Lewis, uh, uh, Michael Woolley, Michael Woolley, Lawrence Michael, oh. Hamilton. Yeah, uh, Copathia Jenkins. Oh my God, Aisha DeHaas, Darius DeHaas, Darius DeHaas, uh, Myron Lockett, CC Brown, CC Brown, Maria Cantone would stop by. Jerry Dixon. Yeah, Maurice uh, Hines, uh, Gregory's brother would come by, and and um, Trent, and Trent, and, and Trent. I have to say, look, I'm going to tell the story. So Trent really uh, was my one of my favorite singers. I just loved the way he sounded, and I loved him. We had big crushes on each other. And so when my father so passed, I came back to New York. And the first thing I did was I took myself on a date to Birdland and saw Trent Kendall perform with his band. That's what I Grass did. Grass illusion. Yeah. I was just, there last night. I was like, what am I going to do? You know, I got to take myself out. So I put on a dress and I went and I hung out with Trent. And the passing of Trent... You no, know, I was on the train coming back from Fire Island, and I just immediately called Maria, and then we immediately called Darius and Michael, and, you know, Michael Woolley and I put together a New Year's Day party at my house yep. for everybody, and which maybe will be a new tradition that I'll throw in a New Year's Day party. It was really beautiful, and, but last night was lovely. And it really was. And we can't say enough about, you know, the time at the duplex. And that Michael Polisi wanted to honor that time because we would all just get together and sing. Right. And have a good time. It wasn't like work, although you and I were working. We were working, but we it was so fun. much fun. And even, like, to this day, people are always like, oh, don't you hate it if to work nights? No, because we're performers. We so love fun. it. We love doing what we do, you know, and that's the whole thing. You have to... But, you know, like uh, Trev was saying, you know, you have your day jobs, too. You know, you have your night jobs, your day jobs. So we, if we could do our night jobs, perform and make money at it, it was like an amazing thing. Right. And everything that I do today is because of that time. I mean, I created Lavinia Draper with Darius. Right. You know, and then we always were creating. I mean, the duplex spurred so much. Also, Susie um, and I are writing a new show um, called, well, we, we did many series of comedy shows called The Bee is Broke, The Bee Don't Come Here Anymore, The, the Bee is Back Online, and they were all referring to the B train and different stops on the B train. And so we would do vignettes based on those stops uh, of five different characters each. And so now we're writing a new show, and a, it, it's not called a B, it's called Track Work. Track Work. Because, as anybody that knows, the subways in New York and... It's a mess. It's a mess. It's a mess out and there. All they do is track work. And so our characters are like growing and changing and, and going with the times like we have. Yeah. And yeah. some of them, we've been doing those shows since 93. So yeah. some of those uh, characters have, were taken out and, and then we've put some new characters in. Yes. So, and that's going to be really fun. Yeah. And we're also going to start working on a short film with Chris DiPiro. Right. That we're going to submit and probably be seen in the Real Recovery Film Festival. Right. And the day we're shooting it, I'm very honored, is April 7th. It's a very important day in yep. my life. It's a milestone day. My 28th year of 24-7 living without a drink. Which is so, a big deal because we're in the, you know, we're in the performing arts and we're, we work in bars and stuff. And same thing with me. I was telling earlier that I also am, am uh in recovery and have been since 89. So, right. but, um, 91. And our friend Chris DePiro will be our cinematographer. Yes, and it's going to be amazing. And so we have a lot, you know, there's so much that comes back to this, you know, everything that, like, what um, Pat was talking about, about how important art is in people's lives and how it, it's the base of so much community. And then Trev was talking about sports. And, and and that community, and, and uh, also Pat was talking about that. It's so important, and the and when, as you get older, you know you sometimes you lose touch with that a little bit because as you get older, you go to work, you do all these things, you have families. But really, we as adults have continued to to create those communities 
be part of them, inject ourselves into these wonderful communities, and have these longtime friendships that are amazing. Yeah, and create with them. Like Lynn Portis and you had your gig oh my at God, New Leaf, so and now... Which, by the way, uh, I'm meeting with them this week. We're going to have some more gigs. I right, it was wait. great. And now I have a musical where Janine Molinari is my choreographer. Unbelievable. And uh, Lynn Portis wrote, composed all the music, and I'm performing it at the studio where I teach acting, the Susan Batson Studio. So, you know... When you're friends with people so long, great stuff can happen. Great so it's stuff called can Missing Persons. Every sure. Thursday from March 28th to April 25th. Those are Thursdays at? Thursdays at, at 8, 8 at the Susan Batson Studio. Yeah, which is on 43rd Street, right? 311? 311 West 43rd Street. You can go to Purple Pass, www.purplepass.com slash Lavinia Draper, who is me. Who knew? Who knew? I uh, heard. You know, Leo didn't know for a long time. What? Uh, but sometimes we invite Lavinia and sometimes we invite Susan. So tonight, what happened was, um, I I was doing the show and I was doing it alone, but I still wanted to cook a big corned beef. And I, was, and I hmm. love to eat. Jimmy, how we doing? How much time? You got a minute. A minute, thank you. And I love to eat. And Susie loves to eat, so she always eats with me. Just eat with me, Susie. I yeah, say. our new film. Our new film. So just anyway, eat with me, too. You could look us up. Just eat with me. If go you go to YouTube, YouTube and type in Just Eat With Me, Susan Campanero, Marie yes. until you'll see our old film. Jimmy Bell, uh, happy um, happy uh, St. Patty's Day to Jimmy Bell. Happy He's in St. Boston. Patrick. We thank him and appreciate him. He's our engineer and, and um, producer, we love you and we thank you. Please come back next week. Isn't Maria the best? Uh, isn't Maria. Susan the best? You guys are the best. Thank you, everybody. Have a great night. We love you. Happy St. Patty's Day.